Hi, Joseph Clay here with my day three of York Eber meeting 2023. This podcast is sponsored by Equine Match. So um, if you haven't watched our podcast before, we try to utilize um, the uh, Voyer dosage tools from Equine Match to look into the pedigrees to get an understanding of horses and their pedigrees. And um, particularly with two-year-old races in particular, um, just because it's more challenging, it's more interesting, it's unexposed. And it is, it's a big challenge. This week we've really, we've gotten close, but not, we haven't uh, gotten a winner. We tipped out, um, Beautiful Diamond uh, to place and Cherry Blossom uh, to win uh, for the Lowther Stakes. Uh, Cherry Blossom was beaten by the favorite Relief Rally who we had saying that wasn't going to stay. She did actually stay. So the, the, the pace, you know, it's fast ground this week. There hasn't been as much need for stamina, like I've been saying in the past, like these horses won't stay. Um, and you know better yourself in England, because I'm in Kentucky. Um, you know, just the conditions make all the difference and horses need more stamina that, and that have more stamina do well in the soft going. And so, you know, horses uh, that have more speed and can go on the top of the of the going uh, on form going have been doing better this week. So, um, so in that score, we're tipping out today the uh, the Jim Crack Stakes. Now, in 1981, my father, Kate B. Clay, he bred uh, full extent, trained by Yorkshireman Steve Norton, who um, they won the Jim Crack out of the American mare total American breeding. This horse, uh, you know, they were thinking, ah, oh, you know, it's going to be a guineas horse. And um, it never actually, it never trained on. So it was a very precocious horse. So in that score, it's fast going. It was fast way back in 1981, a long time ago. But it was a great moment for my father to breed a top uh, group uh, group horse in England and he, and he did get to retain an ownership. So I'm just saying, so I've picked out in um, a horse that's more similar in that profile um, is King's Gamble, uh, trained by Rafe Beckett. He's, he's actually time form. They like him a lot. He has a very precocious profile um, has a lot of speed, um, and he has uh, a certain amount of striding ability. And he kind of suits, you know, with the fast going, he really is similar to what my dad bred years ago. And he's, uh, he, he's been impressive in his last start. So on that score, I'm going to have, um, King Scamble to win. And then another horse uh, that's um, done very well um, is uh, Killian, uh, who was, um, had done well in, in the Akam Stakes at Goodwood. And he has a nice um, turn to foot stride, trained by Carl Burke. And you know, Carl is a great trainer. Um, and he has a really good profile to come from off the pace. Um, I don't think uh, Johan Brahms is, I know he's favorite. I think he's, he tends, his profile is more, um, uh, you know, I think he, he would do better um, with uh, a little more um, stamina. Uh, you know the, the the going a bit softer. Just looking at his his breeding um, 
because we're looking at the six foundation sires of the Fulbright that have a pretty potent influence on each horse. And so they give it sort of a picture. So um, another horse that potentially could be like, uh, if you're trying to do a tri-cast is Action Point. Archie Watson, he has really strong turn of foot and he could make the running and he could be at the end of the frame. But um, the two horses that I feel like um, will be in front, King's Gamble to win, Killian to place. I mean, it'll be close, but, you know, do it back each way. Um, so King's Gamble to win, Killian to place, and uh, Empress um, Action Point to place for the Jim Crack Stakes. Have a great, uh, great week. Thank you for watching our podcasts. All the best.